Am I talking to somebody here? So back to Isaiah. Something must die. Say something must die. I didn't hear you. Say something must die. Say if not something, somebody must die. And can I say this to you? And it is with all boldness. I realize that before God can bring you to the place where he reveals his heart to you, he will kill you. What will he do to you? I didn't hear. He will do what? He will do what? Because if he doesn't kill you, when you get there, you will kill him. You'll be the Lucifer and do a coup there. You will die of your pride. You will die of your anger. You will die of those things. And sometimes, some of you are surrounded people who clap for you. And God will have to collect those clappers from you. They, they applaud your evil. And Lucia dies. As I enters the holies of holies. And when he entered, give me verse 2. Let's look at it critically. He said, above him stood a servant and had six wings. Twin, he covered his face and with twin, he covered his feet and with twin, he did fly. Three. When he saw this in. And one cried, what? Oh, let's talk. One cried, what? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord host. The, the whole earth is full of his glory. They, what were they shouting? Holy, holy, holy. What were they shouting? You know why they shout holy? I've taught you this, but let me teach you again. In the spiritual world, in the spiritual world, the only thing they know about God is that God is holy. They don't know God is love. Because they are not, they've not received the love of God yet. They don't know about his mercy. They don't know about his grace. All they know about him is holiness. So the elders and the angels, they cry, holy, holy, holy. And when he saw the way they were crying, holy, holy, the whole earth is full of his glory. Look at verse 4. When he takes you to his glory. At the post, or in the post of the door, moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Let me tell you, when he speaks, when God speaks, I don't know if you have heard God speak before. If God speaks to you, you will change. Your, your whole metabolism will change. Wait a minute. God has spoken to me to open a hospital. God has spoken to me to open a branch. And you are still sitting there. No, he didn't speak. He visited you. When he speaks, everything moves. When God speaks, your whole system moves. Let me go on. And I said, "Also, we share. I mean, I'll the question." So we said, "I don't know if you're mad, I'm the apple." So we said, "Go and ask." As soon as Isaiah saw the Lord, just the glory, the first thing he said, the thing that came from his mouth was, "Woe is me! I am incomplete. Made any incomplete house." Some of you, the day God will open your eyes and see his purpose for you, you see how useless you are on this earth. You will see that those people who are clapping for you are your enemies. Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of unclean people. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. You see him. He saw him. When you see him, when you see him, one day somebody sold a dress for me, African wear. I went for a big pastor's meeting, dinner. When I went, I wore it. I felt so cool. The host came. When the host came, he came with his protocol. The protocol came, greeted me, sat down, and said, oh, This is FD. I did talk about it. I was feeling cool. Then the hosts, PA or his assistant looked at me and said, this dress you are wearing is a Nigerian who sold it for you. 
I said, yes. He said, Pastor, it's not a word of knowledge. I'm a professional fashion designer. Most of the big men in town, I sew for them. Nigerians, they know how to sew top. They don't know how to sew trousers. He said, check your trousers. Open your leg. There's a hole under. I check it. It's true. I said, hey, how do you know all this? He said, you've met the fashion man. Then it's all the men who goes, yeah, we have been swing. The guy is a real fashionist. I said, hey. I was shocked. So when I came, I checked all the trousers. And I realized that, no. You see, <laughs> no, but I was not embarrassed in any way. I was not embarrassed. But you see, when you meet people who have it, that is when you know that you don't have it. Since then, when I'm visiting, I don't wear African wear. I wear sneakers and my switch on at bridge top. And when I go, he has nothing to say. <laughs> yes, he has nothing to say. Because that area, Kelvin Klein, them, they beat him. <laughs> but I know if I meet some of these, mention some of the names. Oh, some of these designers in the world. What are their names? Zara. Oh, when I went, I was wearing Zara in a way. So, the, so, when I miss one of these big designers too, they will tell us, you know, this one, Zara is for the middle class. I said, what? You said me what? Zara is what? I've met another level. But when I go with my Zara, and they see me, say, hey, you look American, man. I'm so cool, man. That one, they are giving me applause. I tell you this. Stop taking the applause of men. Because people from below you and people who are with you, they don't know who you are. The only person who can applaud you is the one who is on top of you. If the one on top of you has not applauded, if leadership is not saying you are doing well, I beg you, you are failing. If leadership has not said you are doing well, you are failing. David, the woman I sing is Saul has killed a thousand, David has killed ten thousand. Otilo out of the palace, go and suffer. It's the praise of men that took David out of the palace. His gifts took him to the palace. But it's the praise of men. Women who are lower, who doesn't know battle. Hello! Wake her up. If she wants to sleep, there's a bed at home. Where was I? Look at me, are you done? I know sometimes, you know what we do? We are failing, and we compare ourselves to those who are failing. Especially when listening to our, our president. Okay, in West Africa, we are number one. Please, I beg, I beg you. West Africa is not the target. If you come to the sub-Saharan Africa, we are the best. No. That is not what we are talking about UK. Who doesn't have any mineral resource? And yet they have gold reserves than Ghana. That's what we are talking about. We are talking about China. Who have started growing cocoa and very soon they overtake us. That is what is killing all of us. All of us. We have become mediocre minded. Because we have not met the standard. Am I talking to somebody here at all? Or am I talking to somebody here at all? Somebody came to us when we were in Aboshi. Said, if I get your place, we're renting it. I'm done for ministry. Then a person came to meet us here. Said, hey, if I get here, I'm done. He has not yet come here. You see, when they say something, if you're not careful, you don't move on in life. Because you, they, are, they are trying to submit to you their standard. But you see, when God visits you, he applauds your standard. But when he wants to take you to your next level, he takes you to his level. And when he takes you to his level, you will know that you are an incomplete being who need God, 
who need his assistance. He said, woe is me, for I am a man of undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And number two, I dwell with unclean people. Look at someone and say, what is your standard? I didn't hear you. Now let me teach you this. Your standard is determined by who you submit to. Let me teach you something I did practically, me, myself. Me, me, myself, I did. Two, three years ago, our team was open heavens, right? I don't know if you remember. And I taught you something to me, I applied, I don't know whether you applied. And I taught you that when Jesus needed to move on from being a carpenter's son to being recognized as a son of God, he went to submit himself to a man by name. They were cousins, but when he submit himself to a man by name, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was the one who baptized him and said, behold, the Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world. And when he did that, even John the Baptist's own disciples followed him. So me, what I did was that among all my friends, eh, I was the richest pastor. Among all my friends, I had the best auditorium. Among all my friends, I had the biggest congregation. So you know what I did? I looked for friends who were better than me. Who were bigger than me. I can mention their names. Bishop Titi Ofe, um, um, Prophet Eric Emeku, Bishop Takia Boy. When you go to their church and you sit down, you realize that you have not arrived. You are useless. I remember I, I visited, I took some of you there to Lighthouse, Bishop, at the same space. When we go there and say, this is here, this is here, and I see their washroom and I come. One day, Bishop, Bishop, I told was preaching at the bridge. He said, you must have great faith. Great faith does great works. He looked at me and said, like Bishop Dagwood Mills, he has built a lot of buildings. I said, it's true. This is my building. It is not great faith. It is a zuku faith. Now, what has changed? Nothing has changed about me. But the mentality I developed that I have not arrived. Look at what we are building. Now, it came around because I changed the people who were looking at me saying, you are the blessed one. You are the best. You are the dad. You are the this. You are the dad. And that thing gets into your head. So, a few, the reason why you are still single is that everybody is telling you you are beautiful. Forget it all. <laughs> Am I speaking that truth? Oh, they want to want to want to. Every day you meet someone saying you are beautiful. Every day, so keep on. You meet somebody who look at you and say, "I'm not married because of your beauty." Ay, that's the why you met. And I say, "Sit down. Do this this way. Pass here. This is how you must live your life." You're like, Wait a minute. What is this? This is not what I'm back in for. Let me go to people who make me feel good. Make me happy. No, you don't meet an encounter with God and you feel happy. The first thing that you see is your incompleteness. You go on a date with God. You've been using your hand to eat fufu. You meet God at his date. He's using spoon. They bring noodles. You are using fork. He's using stick. When you finish, he said they should bring you cold water. He said no, they should bring tea. Your house, when you finish red, red, with that whole oil palm in your mouth, you still drink ice water. In the house of Jesus, no. After you finish, you need something warm to melt the oil in the mouth. So that it will melt even the so they bring you hot beverage. Then you start seeing that hey child, life you know, is different from here and different from there. You know why the Chinese they live long? They eat all the food we eat, but they will end up, even with the German, they will end up drinking a warm beverage to clean the nonsense they took. We will take in all the yogari and add chilled water. See, my name is ice water. 
you meet your, your, your deliverer, he will change the taste of your mouth. Who did your kogari cry? Who said cabbage? You are eating. I said, what is this leaves? I don't like these leaves. No. Where we are going, you must live long. They give you carrot. They give you cabbage. They give you, I don't like this thing. Let me get some meat. One day they fight. Don't tell anybody. He fried eggs for me. They fried bread and some things for me. I thought it was egg. Not it was cabbage. No, I finished chewing before I got to know that it wasn't egg. It was cabbage. One day they used broccoli to do stew for me. I ate. I thought it was chicken. I, I took the thing. I said, 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 Poor people, poor people, let me teach. If you do that, you are poor. Poor people, they eat everything. Boom, boom, boom. Rich people, they eat small beans, small rice, small plantain, everything is small. Yours, if it is rice, boom, steal. Bam. So they take you to Fiesta Royal. Go and eat. You go there now. You see the beans. You take half plate rice, half plate chicken. You take like four. Go and sit down. You are full. They say, "When to eat ice cream?" I mean, oh, you don't know how to eat. At that place, you go for soup. You you go for bits and bits. By the time you finish, you have a balanced diet, so you can't eat much. See my idea. Say I'm more fourteen ladders. Now it's still a gusso. Now you're not in a shop. Why the ice water? Where you will shed. Please, have you noticed? I'm not if you have visited all the well to do people, rich people. They, you go to the dining table, the table is full of all kinds of meals. Assorted. You know why they eat assorted so they don't die early? Assorted doesn't make you die early. It's a balanced one. Am I talking to somebody here? Or oh, is it true? It's not true. May God this week, I'll continue this message next time. May God this week take you to someone who will challenge your spirit. May you become uncomfortable in that singing room of yours. <laughs> may that life that you think it, it makes you complete, may God reveal another part of him so that you say that, woe is me. I am not done. And listen, let me tell you, when you meet God, he doesn't need to tell you what is wrong with you that's what people don't know. He doesn't have to tell you. The way he lives, you know there's something wrong with you. I'll give you that example. He's using fork and knife. We're using your hand. He's not talking. First day, second day, he's still using it. Nobody will tell you. Learn how to use it. That's why I say God doesn't speak much. He reveals, and when he keeps revealing, as he keeps revealing, you keep changing. You keep changing. You keep changing. So Satan has done it. Stay where you are. Don't seek God. Let me tell you this. You know why they call God the I am? Because when we get to the level he is, come hither. He comes to your level. Now when he wants to transform you, you wake up in the morning, come here. By the time you get here, come here. By the time you get here, come here. So before you realize you've been four years with him, you might not have yet known him. Why? Because he's pulling you closer by the day. So someone will say, so how do I meet him instantly? Next week. Thank you.
There are protocols. What did I say? There are protocols. There are protocols. There are protocols. It's about attitudes. Fortitudes. Your imaginations. How you treat the little he gave you. How fast you are with your response to his will. You are too slow for the little thing he asks you to do. You can't be fast about what he's doing. If I'm Jacob and God strikes my hip, that's the time I've stopped serving God. I didn't come to serve you with my hips. Repair it and let me go back. Let me give you a last scripture and I close. There's a place in God that fowls and lions don't know. Give me in Job 28. I want to fill the keyboard still as I end. I'm very sure about this scripture. Job 28. Seven to nine. Job wanted to ask God questions. And God also asked him some few questions. One of the questions God asked Job, give me lift that the keyboard for me. He said to him, Who taught this son? Where to rise in the morning? You have a dinner with me. You ask me questions. Who told the ocean you can only come to Labati, not to Accra? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Who's west alone? And catch a falling star. Now Job say, Ah, I know. I know. My redeemer. Let me feel your bass. Let all creation. Testify and his life within me cry. I know. Now, before we get here, Job started saying in Job 42 2. He said, Now he said, I know that my redeemer he liveth. That I know thou can do all things. Sorry. Job 42 2. He said, I know thou can do all things, and there's no purpose of yours that can be thwarted. Then God said, This statement you have made, now I know you know me. I'll let people come, give you sacrifice so that you pay the sacrifice so that I can start restoring you. Who are you to question me? Let me tell you, when you go on a date with God, you can't ask God questions. One question He asks you is enough to take you one lifetime. He will just ask you a question. Why are you here? He just asked you, Elijah, what are you doing here? And that question alone, God asked Elijah, was the reason why a child of fire came for him. What are you doing here? I know that I can do all things. And there's no purpose of yours that can be thwarted. New King James. So let me teach you this before we go. If you want to have an encounter with God this week, ask God these few questions and don't change it. Why am I lazy?
why don't I have money? Why is this and this difficult in my life? And just start speaking in tongues. The fact that that door hasn't opened doesn't mean there's no key. Somebody has the key. He is the answer. He's not a problem. Now give me the new King James for this one. There's a part that no foul knoweth. How many of you know foul? You don't have foul in your house. You are a very wicked person. Who did you with Jabi Wabonte? Fowls come home because they are leftovers on your compound. And when they come, usually what they do, they use their claws or something to dig. I don't know if you have seen them doing it. They are looking for worms and coal. They are looking for something. But God said, there is a path that no fowl knows. Then he moves to the vulture. Nor has the falcon, that's the vulture, I seen it. The vulture has a way of seeing where there are carcasses. If you put a carcass somewhere, you don't know where they will come from. They will come and take it. They are the zoom lion of the world. They, are, they have been made to just sense carcass. Just like they discover it. God said there's a place there are carcasses that no falcon or vulture knows. And he says what? The proud lions have not trodden it. Nor has the fierce lion passed over it. He puts his hand on the flint. You are tears the mountains and the rocks. God can let gold slip out of Ashanti gold and come under your land. You know this God we are talking about? You wake up one morning, he will tell you, this house you are staying in, dig it. Say, oh God, because I said, men are actually me. How do I dig my land? There's a gold that, that you don't know. Your foolishness, you will leave that place. Someone will come there and a fetish place will come and say, dig and they will dig and find your gold. Because he said, when you come hither, I will tell you things hereafter. The future can only be known because you came close. When you don't know tomorrow, get close. You will know tomorrow. And this week of fasting, I will wish you would spend time praying that oh God, this is my problem. What is the answer? Until this man, you'll be there and God will tell you for the next three years of your life, she leaves fruits. And he said, this is what you are Until you do it and oh Daniel, you develop an excellent spirit. Because there are things you do that bring things. Daniel did fruit and, and vegetable fasting. And he and his friends became the wisest in all the land. Because the truth is also the way you take in those things. It bears away useless fatty and things that slows down the brain metabolism. It makes you think faster and sharper. Fasting increases those things. And what's others were chewing meat and coal. So someone said, man of God, I need excellent spirit. You need excellent spirit? Get into fruit and vegetable time, seasons. Spend time in that way. Control what you eat. 